So I'm going to show you uh, inside a race boat, um, but I can't show you all of it, um, and I can't show you a lot of bits of it, and I can't tell you which one it is, and I can't um, show you how it all works because it's still quite a um, relevant uh, race boat, and there's a lot of stuff on here that they don't want shown, um, but I can show you the structure because that's quite um, standardized now in the race boat world um, and this one has enough age on it that the structure isn't um, new and innovative and groundbreaking. It's obviously a lot of carbon, some more carbon, a heap more carbon and a bucket load more carbon um, and you'll find that this video, first part of the video because the first boat I'm going to show you which is an all out race boat um, is dark um, and that's the life on board these race boats and they're painful to work on because it's always dark you're always running around with a head torch on your head trying to find stuff we'll um, look at primarily in this in this boat the black one um, we'll talk about the structure whereas the second boat we'll look at um, will be a lot more lighter and brighter because it's um, it's a race boat that has been toned down a little bit um, and has been painted inside and is quite nice and comfortable compared to this one. Anyway, um, so we'll start looking at some of the bits. When you come down, one of the first things that strikes you is the keel structure. Um, and there's a, there's a sense of scale there. There's my foot, and there's the bolts. You know, I'm not a I'm not a little person. I've I'm a size uh, ten shoe, uh, so it's a big gear. So here we have the chain plates, and these are. Um, V-strap, oh V-strap, uh, these are strapping um, chain plates. So this is a bunch of carbon unis here. You can see them running up the whole top sides. All the way up to, um, there's the, where the pin goes in. So this carbon uni goes up and around that and back down uh, each side. And we also have these big uh, webbings here that stop the chain plates from pulling inboard across the deck. Um, all clear finish carbon. <laughs> Mainly because one, weight. We don't want the weight of paint in here. And two, you can see the structure. And it's really important to be able to see, particularly critical components like this. You can see the structure and if it's starting to fail. Because if you can't see the structure, and it's starting to fail, then um, it all falls apart and you don't actually know about it. So it's really important to have um, all of this stuff exposed so that it, it can be seen and uh, maintained during racing. Um, we also have a big ring frame here. So there's the chain plate. This is a ring frame behind it. Now take note, boat builders, on how bulkheads should be built and how they should go together and what they should look like. So we have, this is the primary bulkhead here with all the fibers at plus and minus 45 degrees, right? Not like plywood, that's at zero and 90. This um, is then, so this is the main bulkhead area here, which is each side of, um, in this case, in this boat, Nomex. Um, but in other boats like um, our boat, there's actually foam. So that's the, we use e-glass at plus minus 45 each side of the foam. These ones use carbon each side of the bulkhead um, at plus minus 45. But then the important part is this piece here. It's the edge capping. 
this is actually a bunch of unidirectionals following the opening all the way around and making it stiff. So you can see, uh, yeah, we get to an intersection here where there's actually some uh, additional local patching. Again, the clear coat showing us what's going on here. But this capping is the important part here. We've got the intersection of a longitudinal built the same way. So this is the longitudinal. All the fibers are at plus and minus 45s, taking the shear web or making it a shear web. And then this here is a big unidirectional capping. So this is actually an L shape. There we go. Let's have a look at this underneath here. There you go. So you can see it's actually an L shape. Um, everything's tabbed in with a double bias. Uh, covered in a cloth, all nice and neatly done. Looking forward, you'll see all of the bulkheads, um, ring frames, um, but yeah, you can see it's quite empty in here and um, a bit of spaghetti of ropes. But you can see the structure in here, um, certainly a lot nicer than it. Uh, my 30 year old cat. Little details like where do you put all your wet gear when you're downstairs and trying to have a snooze? There you go, there's the rack. Everything's hung up on this um, batten here with a couple carabiner clips. You've got your number and your clip and your hangy gear up there and so you can find it because there's, say, there's a few guys on board when we're sailing around on this. Here, this partial frame down here. It's a really nice uh, detail of um, the, the lower frame here. It then transitions and tapers back into the hull and then tapers off and you can see all the laminate staggers so it goes from a thick uni planking or thick uni capping and it tapers off nicely into the hull so that there's no stiff point there and that that won't punch through the side of the hull let's go a little look a little bit further aft and at all the systems and stuff that are in there all right another go fast feature of uh, race boats is um, plumbing believe it or not. Um, so just like every other boat, they need um, water to come in and out of it. And um, this is how it's achieved on a race boat. Um, and we'll have a look at the special fittings that he used. So this seacock is probably, doesn't look quite the same as yours um, in your cruising boat or even most um, standard weekend cruiser races. These things are quite cool. Um, so this here, is a um, lever that when you got the red dot, it means it's loose and this plunger can come out. Um, when this plunger comes up, it actually opens up to the sea so that the water can come into the pipe. And when it's pushed down like it is now and locked and green, safe, means that the plunger is pushed down and it's actually flush with the bottom of the hull. So there is no more hull penetration here and um, helps the boat go faster. Safety feature. Now this is something and a feature that should be in every boat, flat out, cruising, racing, speedboat, whatever it is. If you have a hull penetration, this is actually part of a rule. Soft wooden plug attached to a lanyard right next to it. Because if there was ever a problem, a failure or an issue with it, guess what? That's right next door and gets shoved in there. And this is um, a pretty high-tech, fancy race boat, and it has <laughs> a two-dollar soft wooden plug right next to it. So, where did that plumbing go and come from? Here it is. This is what it looks like. Light carbon bowl, pump, and here's, here's the amount of privacy there. There you go, there's the main bulkhead. There's wherever it is. So, that's the amount of privacy you get <laughs> in a race boat. Actually, this, one, this one's a bit um, primitive. Uh, it's not a canting or a gimbal toilet on the, some of the flasher newer ones. This is actually on a gimbal <laughs> and, and leans over with the, with the boat. Here's the back of the bus. Um, we can see uh, full comfort plus. That's where you sleep. That's where you sleep. And we're actually through that, re that really, really after, 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 far, far back one. There's actually another pipe cut back there, and it's about as far. It's as far back in the boat as you can go. That's the transom. Um, you can see some hydros and stuff like that. It's 
lots and lots of systems. Um, really simple. All your ring frames, your longitudinal stringers. This thing is as bare basic as you can get. This funny looking tube here, this is where all, that's where the steering stuff goes through. So that goes through and the steering wheel goes up there. The steering lines come down here. And then if we go back a little further, we can see the steering quadrant, bottom bearing, bottom bearing, and some of the structure that holds this together. Massive, massive gear. Anyway, let's go check out the other boat where you can see stuff. Gonna go show the neighbor's boat off? Yep, go show the neighbor's boat off. Um, we're allowed to show this one, it's just for sale. So if you wanna buy a really nice, really nice boat, um, there's this one. We're going to have a look inside this one. This one is actually built like the other one we just showed you, the, the Black Cave. But this one is a little bit heavier in that it has paint. Um, and unfortunately, one of the features I hate about this boat is it has a teak deck. And on board a race boat, it's an absolute no-no. But anyway, um, it's... It's not a race boat. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's yeah. it's a it's a cruising slash no it's, race boat. It's a race boat that's got some nice super yachty features. All right. Yeah, well, I have to I have to disagree because I think it's beautiful. Yeah, it is a beautiful boat. There's no doubt about it. But it is um, it's a bit of a weapon of a boat. Uh, this is not for your faint-hearted uh, cruiser. <laughs> okay, right. go go. Let's let's have a look. Nice little features like pop-up cleats and nice carbon chafe protection. Nice. Main sheet traveler tracks, they don't run over your toes. Nice. Nice carbon hydro switches and pumps and buttons, recess. Nice. Well, first thing you'll notice is that in this boat, it's a lot lighter. It's definitely not a cave. Um, this is what I would regard as a really nice cruiser, racer, racer, cruiser finish where everything is exposed. So there's no liners anywhere, which is, in my opinion, a fantastic thing. Um, liners hide problems. No liners, highlight problems. And it's better to see a problem than hide a problem. Um, anyway, but you'll see right behind me is probably the first big elephant in the room, um, just like the last boat. Um, this is where the keel is, right in the middle. This one's slightly different, and then there's no bolts around the bottom. Um, this has actually got a lift keel in it, so the keel head goes up and down inside here. Um, there's a big hydraulic ram in here that makes it go up and down. So it reduces its draft by two meters, uh, which helps it get into um, more normal ports. But also with the deeper keel, obviously helps with the performance. Um, the other thing you'll probably notice is the floors. The floors are really, really nice. Um, and these are just painted. This is just a tan paint with a gray stripe and sprayed non-skid. It's fantastic, really easy to keep clean, really lightweight, really, really cool. So if we look at the structure in this boat, it's nearly identical in the way that it's been put together and built as the last boat. And like I was saying with the last boat, the structure um, hasn't changed much or it, the structure has become quite a standard way of building, particularly high performance race boats and that. This is a capped, um, uh, bulkhead where we have the bulkhead here with all the double bias and then a uni capping plank on the end and there's a little bit of uni in the actual deck structure itself which takes up or uh, co uh, corresponds to the uni capping here so this becomes a big I-beam. Uh, with a cruising style boat it's actually a really nice feature in that there's an LED light that's glued to the top of the, the L-beam here so when at night you turn the lights on and it's a reflected light in here, really, really, really cool. Um, other little things in the structure here, showing systems. This is how you do a penetration. 
penetration through structural members have penetration holes. And this one is basically this piece of carbon tube, or in this piece of carbon rectangular tube, which goes through the web, but replaces the strength that it takes away um, to allow all the systems through. Um, yeah, in this boat you can see, again, we can see our chain plate strapping. Looks very much like the other black race boat. Um, but the only thing is it's got a coat of paint on it, so it's a nice whitish, creamy colour. But we can see it. We can still see it. That's the important thing. And they've made a feature out of it. It looks looks really, really nice. It looks cool. Um, you know, you don't have to have wood panelling and everything in your boat to make it look nice. Um, in comparison to the last race boat we looked at, this one's very comfortable and homely and... <laughs> it's not homely. <laughs> it's not homely. No one's going to call this homely. There's the toilet. We've got a hatch. We've got all the nice cupboards, nice features. Sink, you know, it's all moulded. It's This is all... This is all carbon. This is all moulded lightweight carbon. It's really nice. And then the crowning feature, the carbon toilet. Whoa, look. Yeah, no one's left us any surprises. Nice. <laughs> um, you too can have one of these for 7,000 euros. Really cheap. Uh, really nice toilet. Uh, yeah, and here you can see up in here, we've still got structural members running through the boat and toilet. Make a make make a feature of these things. Um, yeah, there's the mast step where we can we can adjust the mast foot. Here's our bricks. That's where the jacking bar goes. Lift it up and down. Blah 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 blah. This is usually my end of the deal here. Here you can see actually the longitudinals running through the boat up to the front, and they've made a feature of it. That's actual the, actually the structural component of the boat, and then the floorboards go between it, and there's two big, nice, big stripes, and it make it look cool, you know, and light. Um, it's good. This is this is this is a proper offshore boat. Um, so this is actually a, a full watertight bulkhead at the front of the boat. So there's still another four or five meters of boat out the front there. Um, Whereas the other race boat didn't, didn't have that, um, which I'm not a fan of. Um, other nice features, okay, here's, a, here's a cupboard. There we go, All right. Zip up lock, lockable cupboards. This is a breathable mesh, super lightweight, and totally functionable. Um, aft sea berths, uh, or pipe cots, getting back down. And this big, what is a box? So, is the we have a gen set in there and just forward in here under the stairs is the uh, main engine it's inside that locker there and that locker there is part of the aft las so with this boat because it's a good offshore oh look we got hot water on this boat which is cool uh nice big isotherm um hot water cylinder back here back here is the f another big full watertight bulkhead. Um, there's the hatch that goes through into the aft las and in there is where the twin rudder stocks are. So if you ever hit something and break a rudder or bust it out, um, it's a full watertight aft bulkhead. It stops any water coming into this main compartment. Two diesel tanks, um, carbon accumulator tank for the hydraulics, and just a few other systems like uh, carbon exhaust pipe, um, yeah, the other carbon exhaust pipe over there for the main engine. Yeah, more more structure down there on the floor. So this is looking more like the the race boat where it hasn't been painted, where it's all just um, clear coat over the the carbon structure. And again, you can see all the same building sort of details. Carbon sheave boxes for the steering, all built into the structure. Here you've seen some of the nicer features about what our race boats are, um, and it's and it's not that um, space age or out of the world, out of worldly. 
it's just some uh, clever engineering, um, some very sound engineering principles in the way that we create beams, I-beams, um, end capping, stabilizing the bulkheads and edges. And these are actually under all the ISO rules which all of our boats are supposed to be um, designed to because these boats are actually designed to those ISO rules as well. Um, why production boat builders aren't more clever about how they build their main structure, I don't know. Um, there is no reason why production boats and cruising boats shouldn't be more like this because it doesn't cost that much more. Um, and I know that for a fact because um, I've designed and built a lot of boats in my time. Um, and we're currently rebuilding ours and the way I'm rebuilding ours and we're on a really tight budget, it is actually cheaper for me to build my boat and its structures in the race boat fashion than it is to try and do the cheap, fast plywood stuff.